Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Your Overseas Home webinar. My name is Christopher Nye, Senior Editor at Your Overseas Home and France Property Guides. And today we'll be chatting with Malcolm McDowell from Chase Buchanan about the financial consider uh, considerations you should think about when moving to France. Uh, it's great to have you all with us, whether live or catching up on demand. Now, we only have 30 minutes, so we'll get, we'll get straight on. If you have a question, please type your query into the questions tab on the right hand side of your screen. And if you need a reminder of anything discussed today, or you want to share this with family or friends, a replay will be available at the Your Overseas Home website to watch at your leisure. So Malcolm, it would be great if you could uh, please start by giving us a quick summary as to who you are and how Chase Buchanan can help our viewers today. Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, to the tax guide for France and all the basic essentials for that. Um, just a, a quick little bit about myself first, won't spend too much time on that. Um, I am a private wealth manager who helps expats. I deal with people who are already international and those who are about to be international. Um, and I have done that for the last 20 years. Um, I have spent 18 of those years abroad myself, so um, a bit sort of uh, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, throwing it away again. Um, and I live here in the UK and I continue to help my clients who are based mainly overseas and um, most of them are, are Europe based as well. So um, I understand the pitfalls of, uh, of going abroad and all the things that you have to that kind of come out of the woodwork. So I'm here to help those people um who are going through that process because i've been, been there myself okay um a little bit about um about france um and just in general before we kind of start is um the french tax system and um the way that all works is is, is kind of skewed towards um going after the rich so you'll see this when when we go through the the, the slides um it is a little bit more kind of, I suppose, the wrong word is, or the right word is, is sort of socialist, but um, they do tend to go after much higher net worth individuals. Um, and so um, that's not to say they don't go after the lower ones, but they tend to go much more after the higher ones. And if you don't get your ducks in a row and don't become sort of France compliant, it can be very, very painful. So that's where I, where I come in. Um, I try and help people um, mitigate their tax as opposed to avoid it or evade it okay so i want to make that absolutely clear um the first page i've got we won't spend too much time on basically this is um the taxes that you will pay if you're earning an income in france so some of you will some of you won't um depends on your circumstances but this think of this as like the equivalent to national insurance and the french equivalent to that okay and those are the numbers as they currently stand they do change yeah, and they tend to change on an annual basis. So the French do, I do fiddle with these numbers. And it's the same with uh, income tax as well, which is on to the, the next slide. Okay. Uh, I won't go through those numbers, but they're pretty, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, again, these change on an annual basis. They go up a little bit every single year. I wish they went up with inflation, but I'm pretty sure that they don't, especially given what inflation is at the moment. Um, so just bear that in mind, they do tweak these every single year. So just keep up to date with what these bandings are. Okay. And you'll see at the end, uh, uh, you'll be able to see, uh, looking at it now, which kind of bandings you'll be falling into, um, once you, uh, once you move over to France and start earning an income. Okay. They also, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, they um, have a little bit of a special high incomes uh, exceptional tax as well for those people who are doing rather well. Uh, so they do that for um, for couples and for individuals, um, and they they knock on another three or four percent depending on um, how much you are earning per annum, um, and it's on worldwide income. Remember that, okay? So they'll be after what you earn, whether it's uh, earn in France or whether it's um, an income coming from uh, or dividends from the US or whatever it is, they don't care. They want to, they're, they're interested in your worldwide income um, and they'll be coming after that. Um, so if you're one of the high earners, um, the French will be sucking on this extra tax here. Okay, so just be aware of that. 
Next, this is uh, the one that most people want to know about. Okay, and I'm trying to kind of understand. This is the wealth tax, but it's now the real estate wealth tax. So it really just applies to real estate. Okay, so let's go through this quickly. So anything over 1.3 million, yeah, in terms of the, the property that you own in France, yeah, will be taxed at, the, at that rate. Okay, if it starts going above that, you can see the bandings there, um, how much it's going to cost on a per annum basis, okay? Um, if it's anything, just to clarify also, if it's above 1.3 million, you start paying those taxes. If it's below that, you don't. But once it goes above the 1.3, you start paying between uh, 800,000 and uh, the 1.3, so 0.5%. So it kind of goes backwards on that one, but it's really anything above 1.3%, that's when you'll start paying tax, okay? Another thing to bear in mind, as I mentioned at the top of the slide, um, it's okay if you've got properties and lots of them outside of France when you first move to France, because you these, these properties won't be included on this list. For the first five years, you've got something to do about it. Okay, you can plan, you can maybe sell them, um, maybe sort of sort out some, some, some other kind of uh, creative accounting, but the most important thing is that, um, You've got five years to before you have to pay any of these taxes um, on any properties which are outside of France once you move to France. Okay, so just be just be aware. So don't panic if you've got five properties and you're moving to France. Don't think you have to pay this tax straight away because you don't. Okay, um, movable properties. I won't spend too much time on this one, but it's important that we we do talk about it. Um, this is a, a a tax that doesn't exist in the UK. So it's on things like paintings, if you're renting out a, a Porsche or, or any movable objects which are not property and you're making money from them or they are increasing in value. The French are interested in those. So they're usually for high net worth individuals, people who perhaps got large painting um, collections, this sort of thing. Um, just bear in mind that the French will like to tax, tax those. Okay, so again, it doesn't exist in the UK, but it does exist in France. Don't come across it often, but I do need to make you aware of it. Okay, um, your UK pensions. This is another very important one. Okay, with me a second. Okay, so UK pensions, income received in France is taxed in the UK first. Okay, let me just add a caveat to that. If you were to move to uh, to France and then start drawing on your UK pension without doing any preparation or anything like that, then yes, you will be paying tax in the UK first. Then you would have to make up the difference in France, okay? That is a real pain, and I strongly suggest you don't do that, okay? If you are going to draw on your pensions, um, your UK pensions while you're in France, there's a way of setting that up so that the, the money gets paid to you gross, and then you pay the tax in France um, yourself, okay? And that's the best way to do it. I can help people sort that out. But if you don't get your ducks in the row, if you don't get yourself organized, and you just move to France and then start drawing on your UK pension or state pension, whatever it is, you'll get taxed automatically in the UK. You don't want that. Talk to someone like me first, okay? If you've got pensions that you haven't drawn down on yet and you're gonna move over to France and then start drawing down them in a year or six months or even six years time, then talk to me because there's going to be much more tax efficient ways of drawing down and amalgamating those pensions if they're all sitting in the in the UK. If you're basically a tax resident in France and you have UK UK pensions, then it's kind of oranges and apples. You really want to try and get a, an international pension that caters for someone like yourself as opposed to just leaving it in the UK. International pensions are people who are, are for people who are international. UK pensions are for people who stay in the UK. So you move to, to, to France and you've got a number of pensions in the UK, talk to me first. Okay. Uh, next. Inheritance tax. Whoa, this is a big one. Okay, very complicated topic. Um, I've given a very sort of high level overview at, at, at this point. Um, basically, as soon as you become a tax resident in France, as far as the French are concerned, 
you are liable to inheritance tax when you pop your clocks. Okay, so um, and the inheritance tax, as you can see there, um, the tax free allowance is only a hundred thousand euros, so much, much lower than what you have in the UK. So it's really quite, quite gruesome. Okay, um, and this is something that you need to plan for, okay, especially if you're getting older and so on and so forth. What I would say to you about inheritance tax is this inheritance tax is something that you pay if you don't really like your kids very much. All right. So I know it's quite funny, but it is something that you should really organize for well before your deathbed. If you try and organize it before you, um, on your deathbed, you're not going to have a chance. It's something that you need to sort out several years beforehand. OK, and it's a completely unnecessary tax to pay. As it is unnecessary to pay in the UK, it is also unnecessary to pay in, in France. But you need to get yourself organised. And if you want to help, any help sorting that out, again, come to me. Obviously, it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Everyone's situation is different. Okay. Uh, after that, okay, so asset portfolios. This is where it can get a little bit complicated if you've got capital redemption or life assurance policies. Okay, but put those to one side. If you've got any other... Um, investments um, that you've currently got either with a bank or on a platform or whatever it is um, the French will be very interested obviously in coming after that in terms of the capital gains tax okay um, you will either pay uh, income tax on it or the flat PFU 30% tax okay so just be aware there are very simple ways of just making yourself French tax compliant so that when you move over to France, you don't have to pay this tax. Okay, you can just sit inside a French compliant product and it grows with gross roll up and you don't have to pay anything. So again, talk to someone like myself if you're if that's a situation that you're in. Okay, very important. And when it comes to capital redemption bonds and life assurance policies, they can get even more complicated because it depends what type of income and when were those premiums paid. Yeah, as to how much tax you're going to pay. So it'll be very specific to your kind of situation. So just bear that in mind. If you've got any kind of investments outside of the UK um, or even in the UK and you're moving to France, the French will be very interested in the capital gains tax on, on those investments. It's very easy to, to mitigate it. You just need to put it in a French compliance product. Again, that's something I can help with. Okay. And then the final page. Um, like I say in the, in the quote, you know, we all have to pay tax. That's a given, but there's no need to leave it tip. Yeah. And all I would say to uh, in, in, in sort of um, in summary is that at the end of the day, um, when you become UK, uh, when you're a UK tax resident, you do things almost automatically which are UK tax compliant. So you have an ISA, you may have a SIP, um, you may have some other type of uh, investment portfolio. Um, but it's always UK tax compliant. It's the same thing in France. So all you need to do is when you move to France, just become French compliant in the same way that you're UK compliant now. And that's what I help people do. Great. Right. Thanks very much, Malcolm. That's really helpful. Um, now, let's uh, let's divide uh, our, uh, our viewers into those who are retiring in France and those who are just buying a holiday home or, or a second home in, in, uh, in France. So thinking about the retirees first, how is their British pension taxed when they move to France? Okay, so if they don't do anything about it and they just simply move over to France and then start drawing on their either their state pension or their private pensions or their final salary pensions, then what the HMRC will do is tax it in the UK. And then it comes to France and needs to make up the difference. OK, um, you either have to pay HMRC or you have to pay the French, uh, the French authority. So depending on how much it is and so on and so forth. Very easily avoidable. OK, just talk to someone like myself and I can set up something so that when you uh, get paid from the UK, it gets paid to you gross. So you just need to, to basically start communication between the French tax authorities and the UK uh, HMRC. Make sure these documents are stamped by both parties and then the monies get paid to you gross and then you simply pay the tax in France. Nice and simple. 
Okay, if and now we've had a question. Yeah. Sorry, go on. If you don't prepare for it, you'll pay the tax in the UK. And what HMRC have started doing recently is slapping, since Brexit, I've noticed, start slapping an, an emergency tax code on there. Okay. <laughs> so be careful. Um, we've had a question from Alan who says, I have a SIP and could be drawing down up to 25% at 55. Is there a solution? Okay, solution. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. You draw it down 25 percent at 55. A yes, solution to what? well, I suppose. Uh, well, I suppose you get tax for so. Um, I, I think you've already covered this in, in what you said, but um, uh, you um, you can you can take out 25 percent of your of your of your pension pot okay. at 55, yeah. and you don't pay tax in that in the UK, yeah, but you will if you send it to France. I'm Correct. Concerned. Okay. So if you're going to be drawing down your 25% tax free lump sum, if you already hit the age of 55 and you have the ability to do that, then I would draw it down in the UK. Yeah. Because okay. then it's tax free. Okay. If you then yeah. go to France and try and draw it down, the French will try and tax it. Okay. This is still going through the courts and it's still being challenged and so on and so forth. Um, but the French will tax that. Okay, so if you are going to draw down and your, take your 25% uh, lump sum, your PCLS, your pension commencement lump sum, then um, if you don't want it taxed, you need to draw on it while you're in the UK. Okay. But I would guess if you're putting that into a second home in France, you are at least you're not paying the, the second home um, surcharge that you pay here. We, we, we pay 3% extra uh, stamp duty, don't we, on a UK property? Correct, correct. So you're so you're saving that too when you buy property in France. Right. Okay. Uh, question from Jeremy. I have two pensions that mature in five years, but will we be moving to France for ten years? Can I convert these to gross payments when I move? Okay. So what you can do is, if you're not going to move for another ten years, then you can take the twenty-five percent tax-free lump sums in the UK. But you can also obviously take them as entire lump sums because you have what in, um, flexible drawdown in the UK. So that's not something I would advise necessarily because at the end of the day, um, if I understand the question correctly, can I take it all out as a lump sum before I move to France? Yes, you can. Yeah, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. Only yeah. uh, you might start getting Christmas cards from Her Majesty's regular customer, right? Because okay. you'll get taxed quite heavily because you'll be hitting higher tax values okay so the vast majority of your money that you take will be sitting in a higher tax band all right so just okay. be aware or be aware of that uh we've had a question from matt um who says what are the implications if he moves to france and rent and rents his home home there i don't suppose that that matters but and he keeps his uk property and rents that out yeah so we'll refer back to the to the um uh, to the page that I, I showed a little bit earlier. If you're renting out a property in the UK, no problem. It gets, it will be seen as income by the French, okay? And it will be taxed accordingly, okay? And then if it's over the 1.3 million, then it will have, you'll have the additional wealth tax, real estate wealth tax to think about as well. But you don't have to think about that for the first five years. So income tax and think about the wealth tax after five years, depending on the value of the property. Okay, um, but just a question on that on that rent on your movable. Um, uh, what was the word? I've written it down, but I can't remember. Or your, your movable at wealth. Um, how do they calculate that? I mean, if you go and you've got a lovely yeah. picture and a few pots and a you know, how do they? Does someone come round and do an inventory? I mean, yeah. that that would be quite handy. No, uh, no need for antiques roadshow. You can just get the yeah. rich taxman around. Well, first you uh, you have to declare it. Okay, so if you do have movable properties which you're making money from, okay, right, you should declare them. Okay, if for some reason they don't believe you or they want to check it, then they can rock up at your house. Yeah, okay, all right, interesting. So, okay, and that happens. Okay, but right. just, just be aware, it, it is it, it doesn't happen that much. Most people have got their income coming from different sources, not from stuff that's sitting around in their house. Yeah. But it does happen. So if you've got high net worths with, like I said, paintings or 
uh, fancy card collection, bike collection, stuff like that, then that's yeah. something that uh, Fred will be interested in taxing. Okay. Um, now, thinking about those people who are buying uh, holiday homes rather than um, retiring to France or moving to France full time. Now, we did we did a survey uh, the other week. In fact, it's ongoing. Um, and we asked people if they're retiring or buying a ho uh, holiday home. And the ones buying holiday homes, nearly all were planning on spending at least two months of the year in France. And 50% were planning on either working there definitely or maybe working from home. Which, which presumably is within the rules because it's a it's a holiday home. You're you're within you're below the limit. Um, what are the implications for them? Uh, do they need to worry about about anything? They don't have to declare that income presumably because they still they're still UK resident. Correct. So the the the, the line in the sand here is the 183 days. As soon as you start spending more than 183 days in a year in France then that's when the French, in a French tax year, okay, which remember is different to the UK tax year, okay. that's where some people get slip up, okay, um, then that's, you're under the radar and you, you don't have any issues as long as you're not spending more than 183 days. So that's, that's the case. So you can carry on, let's say you've got a, a holiday home and you'll carry on working over the internet and over the telephone and what have you, no issue, okay, they can't come after anything at all because you're not a, a tax resident of France. But as soon as you go over those 183 days, all bets are off. Okay, okay. so just be very well, be, be very aware of that. And I've, you'd be amazed how many people just count the days wrongly. You'd be amazed. Okay, so, uh, and then they get caught out straight away. Yeah, the reporting that happens between uh, the UK and Europe, not just France, but other European countries, is much more advanced than it was 10, 15 years ago. Banks are telling uh, uh, other banks who's got what, where, how many, where they tax resident, and you can't have a bank account unless that particular uh, bank knows that you're tax resident in that particular country and so on and so forth. So don't underestimate the reporting between the two countries. And also another thing I'd like to just throw in here as well, because I've come across it a few times recently, is couples who try to have one resident, tax resident, in France and another one and the other uh, member tax resident in the UK yeah that only leads to tears trust me and especially if you're trying to do that with domiciliary as well okay because then you're asking for trouble right because that's oh, really yeah because that's that's all smoke and mirrors anyway but if you're talking about having one member who's tax resident in France and the other and the other spouse is tax resident in the UK that will can only lead to trouble so that because what what they all interpret it as it's just people trying to do tax evasion. Right? We're putting yes. certain assets in one person's name and certain assets in the other. Just go to France, make yourself tax compliant. It's very simple. Yeah. I suppose the issue is if uh, if you uh, are still working and you one partner is still working and therefore can't work in in France and then therefore has to has to remain in the UK, and you have to you kind of work in two homes. Uh, yeah. But anyway, that's for, that's yeah. For, it, can that's be, for. it can be tricky. So just, I'm not yeah. saying it's it's illegal, but some people do that in order to try and reduce their uh, avoid their taxes. So that's not that's the, the spirit of what it's it's meant. To no. Be. Okay. Well, I mean, it's handy for uh, for us uh, us British people because you know France is is so close, so we can just nip back with the forwards. But what about we've had a few uh, few uh, questions from uh, from. From Americans, and we found one from uh, Bonnie, all about Americans moving to France. Okay. Do the same? Is it basically the same as as for the UK, or and can you help help them as well? Uh, yeah, well, we can help them. I will pass you. I would basically pass you on to uh, our American expert when it comes to that sort of thing, because Americans are a slightly different kettle of fish, right? Americans from day one have always been taxed on their passports. Okay, uh -huh. so it's a very different thing. So as soon as I come across any kind of Americans, I deal with uh, a chap called Alex Ingram, who is an absolute expert in these, in, on, on this side of things. Um, obviously, you talk to me first, I'll find out about your situation, and I'll pass you on to Alex, because what he doesn't know about um, all these sorts of things, of expats um, uh, in, uh, in France, uh, US expats and so on and so forth, 
uh, it's worth knowing he's been there himself. He's a, an expat, an American expat himself. You know, in Italy. So um, these are all things that we can definitely help with, but you need an expert who specifically deals yes. with that and is licensed to do that. Okay, okay. so I'm not licensed to do that, but my colleague is. Okay. Uh, we've had a question. When is the French tax year? Okay, it's January to uh, it's January to to, uh, to December. Yeah, okay. unlike us, who have the uh, the <laughs> April nonsense. Right, we're the only people who do that. <laughs> what a great idea! It seems so simple now you mention it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> is there an ideal uh, question from Alan? Is there an ideal time to retire to France regarding tax? Well, oh, uh, an ideal time when you're ready. When you when you're good and ready, um, it's very different for different people. It's different for different individuals. It's a very difficult difficult question to to answer. It's um it's you know as soon as you start going into drawdown on your pension, then um and, and you want to go somewhere where it actually uh, the sun actually shines shines, then um yeah. But that's that's a very hard one to to, to answer. Is there any specific year time of year? No, not really. Okay. Yeah. Not 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 really. No. Okay, a uh, question from Carolyn. If I buy, if, okay, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Can can my son buy me a house in France to mitigate uh, inheritance tax? She's paying, but uh, putting it in her son's name to mitigate in, inheritance tax, but she'll live in it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're red hot on that kind of stuff. They don't they recognize that. that. So yeah, they, for example, they don't recognize trusts. So anyone who's got stuff set up in trusts, oh, yeah. I didn't mention it in the book, but French don't recognize trusts, for example, all that kind of stuff. So they're, they're red hot on that kind of that kind of gifting. And if, if, if uh, okay. uh, and also people hiding stuff in, in companies and lending themselves, lending money to the company and then getting the company to pay them money and avoiding income tax, they can do that in the UK. You can't get away with that in France, yeah? So no, they'll, they'll come after that kind of stuff. Be very careful with that. If you want to avoid, sorry, mitigate inheritance yes. tax, there are ways to do it, but that's not one of them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we, um, when I used to be self-employed, um, I just remember the filling in the tax forms as being the biggest nightmare of the, of the year. Um, when we moved to France, can you sort all, all that out for us, or or is there someone to help us? Is it in English, or is it a bit of a nightmare? No, no, it's not a bit of a nightmare. But you just need to get someone to help you. I mean, I don't fill fat tax forms out for, for for clients, but I can point them in the right direction of of uh, um, of accountants who will do that kind of thing for them. Yeah, so we 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 do have not that we have anyone that we, we prefer, but um, but yeah, we can we can point people in the right direction. But that's not some, that's not something that I would do myself okay but fair enough okay um uh, kate has asked um I, I guess this sort of relates to what we were talking about earlier we want to move to france to live can my husband still work for his uk firm from france and how would that work with taxes and residency yes of course he can yeah no problem at all yeah that's not going to be a problem it's just where is he doing the work yeah so if he's going to spend more than 183 days in france doing that work that's when he becomes a french tax resident yeah if he does some of that that work in the uk uh, more uh, more than 183 days in the uk he's a is a uk tax resident yeah it doesn't matter where the company's based it's irrelevant okay yeah. well we've actually run out of time uh is there anything that you that you feel we should have asked and uh, that you just any points that you that you want to make before we before we close well, no, not really, but just it's just um, all I would say is re reiterate something that I've, I, I mentioned before. Don't be concerned about, I mean, this, there are lots of um, complicated rules, especially when it comes to inheritance tax and things like that. But these are all things that can be mitigated. Yeah. Right, yeah. Don't try and do anything cheeky just because there are rules and regulations which you can use, which are perfectly legal to mitigate your income tax mitigate your capital gains, mitigate, mitigate your inheritance tax, and um, mitigate IHT. Yeah, so just, just bear that in mind. There's perfectly legal ways of doing it. Don't try and be cheap. Just talk to someone like me. If I can help you, I can help you. If I can't, I can't. But um, those are the things that you've just got to, you've just got to bear in mind um, when you move to France. Just get yourself French 
tax compliant. Simple as that. Okay, fantastic. Well, well, thank you again, Malcolm, for all your uh, insightful tips and, and advice. We do recommend that our viewers get in touch with Chase Buchanan directly to discuss your requirements in, in detail. Um, we've had lots of questions that we haven't had time to ask, to answer, but do, we will send you, well, in fact, you can see them on the, on the screen there, uh, Malcolm's details, and you can uh, ask Malcolm directly. And, um, and you'll find a whole lot of information either, either on the France Property Guides uh, website or uh, at your overseas home. We're gradually uh, moving property guides into your overseas home. So that's why uh, we have both brands at the moment. So thank you to all our viewers for watching this session. Uh, we wish you the best in your move over, overseas. Uh, do take a look at our websites. Um, thanks again and happy property hunting. Thanks very much, Malcolm. Thank you.